Good morning and welcome to worship at Westlake Hills Presbyterian Church, where our mission is to invite people into God's larger story as we follow Christ together. My name is Kevin Ireland. I'm the pastoral resident here at Westlake Hills Presbyterian Church. And uh, while Emily and Stephen are enjoying a a Sunday away, uh, I have the pleasure of having my old seminary professor, uh, the Reverend Dr. Carolyn Helsel. Uh, She has been a longtime member here, so I I hope that you all know her. Uh, But it is indeed a a great joy for me to have her helping us lead worship today. And uh, she taught me what I knew, so hopefully uh, if you like it, you can compliment her. If you don't like it, then uh, you, can, you can blame me. <laughs> uh, as we prepare for worship today, I want to also extend a very happy Father's Day to all of you all who are fathers, to those who have fathers, to those who act as fathers. I hope that includes everybody here. So happy Father's Day to you all. So now, as we prepare for worship, please rise in body and spirit. We will call ourselves to worship in unison. Please join me. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless God's name. Tell of God's salvation from day to day. Let us worship God. we sing in worship of our desire to praise God throughout our lives, the reality is that we often fall short. We come together every Sunday to confess our sins and humble ourselves before God to remind ourselves that we need God and that we desire ever more to show how much we love God through our lives. So with that spirit, let us turn now in prayer to confess our sins together. Loving Lord, all of creation proclaims your glory, yet we confess that too often creation's song is drowned out by the clamor of our lives. Forgive us when we fail to join the chorus that resounds from the heavens to the earth and all that dwells within. Grant us grace to attune our hearts to the symphony of your handiwork. Empower us to join with creation, singing praises to your name. Amen. Friends, hear the good news that God is so full of grace and mercy. God is overflowing with love. God does not hold a grudge or hold our sins against us or pay us back for our wrongs. For as far as the heavens are from the earth, so strong and great is God's love for us. 
As far as the sunrise is from the sunset, God has separated us from our sins. Trust in this truth and be at peace. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And let all God's people say, Amen. service where we pass the peace of Christ and during this time we will invite the children to come forward for faith sharing up here and we pass the peace of Christ as a physical reminder that we are for one another the body of Christ we pass this peace with a wave or a handshake a hug or a fist bump to say I see you and God sees you and God loves you so in that knowledge, let us pass the peace of Christ with one another. May the peace of Christ be with you all and also with you.
Ah, oh, there we go, perfect. Well, good morning. Um, I am Olivia, and I work with high school students most of the time. I'm the Associate Director of Student Ministry, so maybe you've seen me around. I was actually up here a few weeks ago, so you might have seen my face. Hi, yay, welcome. So I was like, I was trying to remember, I was like, Last week, we kind of did a really cool thing with, like, the whole church. It was called VBS. Were any of you a part of that? Did any of you guys go? I went. Did you guys go? I was like, I had a few people. I see some familiar faces. I think we're a little, a little nervous this morning. That's okay. Lisey was here, too, so it was pretty awesome. Do you guys remember what your favorite part was? Charlie, did you have a favorite part? Was it, did you have fun at games? Was games pretty fun? Yeah. Games were pretty fun. I had fun at those too. What else? Lisey, did you have a favorite part about VBS? I liked when we went up, we came up here and played games. Like, oh yeah, we came up and played games. Yes, we did have minute to win at games in the beginning. That was awesome. Yeah, shaving cream and throwing Cheetos. That was, that was fun. Cheese balls. Yeah, that was pretty cool. But I think um, the thing that I remember the most was there was a chant that we did every day. It depended on kind of what we said, but the ending was the same, and we kind of had an action with it. It was something, something, shine, Jesus light, right? Do you remember that, Charlie? I remember that. We did it a lot. It was like every time, right? And it kind of got me to thinking that there was something that we did really cool that I thought we did really well that showed Jesus' light to everyone around us. And that was our mission opportunity that we were able to take part of at VBS, which our, our job was that week was to, um, you know, take money and be able to give that um, to pay for... Um, toiletries, to toothbrushes, to soap, to toothpaste, um, and to be able to hand that off to our mission partner, Mobile Loaves and Fishes. And I am so happy to report that we were able to raise $515 from just our students and our children. They were able to do that that week, which was awesome. And I did the math, I made sure to do it with my calculator correctly, that with all of those deodorants and shaving cream and toothbrushes added up, y'all were able to buy 2,360 products for our neighbors in need, which is pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. Yep. But I know that some of our friends here were not necessarily able to experience the, you know, Jesus shine shining Jesus' light that week. And so I feel like it would be pretty awesome for us to share what it was like. So I encourage you all to draw your attention to our screens. So if kids, if you want to turn back around and kind of see our recap video. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. I was like, I know as a volunteer and also a staff person, it was amazing to be a part of that week and just be able to shine Jesus' light in our own way. So if y'all are ready, let's do a little prayer and then y'all can go back to your parents, okay? Bear your hands and pray with me. 
Thank you, God, so much for the week of VBS and being able to experience Jesus' light in our own way, whether it was through snack, through games, through being able to give coins or some cash here and there to help our neighbors in need. We ask that you can help us to remember how to shine Jesus' light in the weeks to come, whatever way that may look like, um, whether that's through the offering plate or just to be a good friend and a neighbor. Uh, we just love you so much and thank you for our time together. Amen. Good job, guys. Thanks, Olivia. I want to uh, call your attention to the friendship pads there on the end of the aisles. If you would uh, take those and let us know that you're here, pass them down. If you see a name that you're not familiar with, this is a great excuse to introduce yourself and make a new friend at church. I want to tell you just about a couple things that are going on here in the life of the congregation. Uh, this is our day to return our blue bags for Monas de Cristo. If you have them, we will collect them uh, from you. If you forgot them, that's okay. You can bring them back to the church uh, Monday or Tuesday. Uh, we have a little bin that's right by the entrance to the 200 wing, and you can just put it in that bin. Uh, we have a great event for parents of pre-K children. That's children ages three to five, but not going into kindergarten. Uh, they say there's nothing, uh, there's no such thing as a free lunch, but in this case, if you are a parent of someone between three and five, we would be happy to take you out to lunch. In fact, you can leave your kids here at the service, or at the church on Sunday, June 25th. Uh, Tate and uh, Miss Judy will have activities planned and a meal for the kids, and you can go have a nice meal with our Director of Engagement. Teresa Ward and Pastor Emily, and uh, we will pick up the tab for that meal. So I invite you all to take advantage of this opportunity to get to know some of the other parents in the congregation, and you can do that by going to our website. Uh, there's a link to Realm where you can register for that event. Uh, we also have an all-church service day on July 26th. Uh, and that is for a back-to-school program with Monas de Cristo. This will be an all-church workday from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. And again, you can sign up on our website at whpc.org. Just go to that service tab, and there's a bunch of great opportunities where you can uh, serve this community through this church, and uh, that is just but one of those opportunities. We have lots of other things going on in the life of this congregation, so I invite you to check out our website and see about all the classes and activities that we have in store for you this summer. So we are continuing our sermon series, uh, a tour of the national parks in our Parks and Recreation sermon series. We began with the sunrise over Acadia National Park on the far eastern edge of the United States, the first place to see the new day. And Pastor Emily reminded us that our God is continually creating and making new beginnings for our lives. Last week, we went all the way over to the west coast and we visited Mount Rainier, and we were reminded that God's glory is continually being revealed to us in the different ways that that mountain looks and also in the merriment of Vacation Bible School. Well, this Sunday, we are visiting Arches National Park. Arches was declared a national monument in 1929 and in 1971 was declared a national park. But it was a sacred space for indigenous people for millennia before that time. In fact, it was first settled by the Fremont and Puebloan people, and then later by the Ute and uh, Paiute, Paiute people as well. And they saw this space as sacred. They imagined these rock spires as sentient beings. Yeah, as sentient beings that would protect and provide for the people. And they would see these arches as portals through time and space. And to this day, they are still important places for their tribal worship. In order to form these arches, though, there are four ingredients that need to happen. First, you need lots of sand and salt 
And this basin area was covered by seas repeatedly in the formation of the continent. The third thing you need is water. Because when you have these miles of salt and sand that are built up as the tectonic pressure pushes up on the rock, cracks emerge and water seeps through these cracks, dissolving the salt and leaving these ridge fins of sandstone. The fourth thing you need, though, is time. Eons and eons of erosion, millions of years that erode away the softer stone, revealing the arch of this magical place. The thing is, though, in the sense of geological time, these arches are ephemeral. They fall. And in 2008, the mighty wall arch fell. And this led geologists and engineers to try to figure out the structural integrity of all of the remaining arches. So the way they did this was that they put little seismometers on each side of the arch. And as they recorded the waving of the arch back and forth, the little wiggles and giggles that the arch made, they got frequencies that we hear in this video. These frequencies are sped up 25 times and they reveal this song that the arch sings. The most amazing thing is that all of these arches have unique songs. Listen to this song of the moonshine arch. You can hear those stones literally joining their voices with creation. You can listen to a collection of these, by the way, on a website that's curated by Jeff Moore uh, at the University of Utah. And I will put a link up on our Facebook and Instagram pages if you want to check that out later this week. But this morning, as we celebrate summer and the longest days of the year, a time when creation is bursting forth with wildflowers and perfect peaches and homegrown tomatoes, I want to consider how we can better attune ourselves to creation's song and how we might be inspired to join in that chorus. So will you pray with me? Come, Holy Spirit, still our minds that we may listen, tune our ears that we may hear, and open our hearts that we may know your word for us today, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our scripture lesson today is Psalm 48. It's one of the Alleluia Psalms at the very begin very end of the scroll of Psalms. Hallelujah means praise the Lord in Hebrew. And all of these five last Psalms in that book are all extolling creation to sing praises to God and encouraging everyone to join in that song. So as we read Psalm 142, listen for God's word for you this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from heaven. Praise him in the heights. Praise him all his angels. Praise him all his hosts. Praise him sun and moon. Praise him all you shining stars. Praise him you highest heavens and you waters above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord for he commanded and they were created. He established them forever and ever he fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, ye sea monsters in all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and frost, stormy wind fulfilling his command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animal and cattle, creeping things and flying birds, kings of all the earth and all people, princes and all rulers of earth, young men and women alike, old and young together. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above earth and heaven. 
He has raised up a horn for his people, praise for all his faithful, for the people of Israel who are close to him, praise the Lord. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, science has revealed what the psalmist described so long ago, and that is that the stars and the sun and the moon and nebula all sing their praises to God. Listen to this wonderful song that's sung by the Karin Nebula. This music was produced by taking the infrared frequencies from the dust and gas of this nebula and transcribing them into notes that make this beautiful chorus. Hallelujah from the heavens. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Hallelujah, you shining stars. Psalm 48 calls all of creation to praise the creator. Fire and storm, hills and mountains, shrubs and tall trees, wild beasts and domesticated cattle. Even sea monsters are called to join in that call. And did you know that sea monsters can sing their song and it can be heard, well, whales at least, can sing their song that can be heard for thousands of miles below the surface of the water. Did you know also that earthworms, we always thought that they were silent. Well, they actually make small little staccato sounds that we were only able to hear just recently. The Kansas State bird, not the Jayhawk, of course, but the meadowlark, has over 300 different notes in its song. Praise the Lord, ye creeping things and you flying birds. Did you know that the sing a single hydrogen atom has more frequencies than a grand piano? Or that the outer shell of electrons in a carbon atom has the same harmonic frequencies as Gregorian chants? Every day, in every moment, we are surrounded by these ultrasonic sounds, songs outside of our realm of hearing. And the psalmist is calling us to join in that song. All rulers, all princes, all men and women, young and old alike, all are called to join in creation's chorus because we are all God's creatures, each and every one of us, and there are no exceptions. We are created to join with all of creation in this praise of our Creator. You know, our Reformed tradition audaciously proclaims that this is our chief end. This is our reason for life. This is our purpose of being, to glorify God and enjoy God forever. Or as John Calvin reminded his congregation and ours during a over 10 sermon long series on the book of Corinthians, he said that there is not one blade of grass, there's no color in the world that is not intended to make us rejoice. Friends, I encourage you this week to go out and experience that nature because our connection to creation, we don't have to go to a national park. We can go right outside. We can go right outside our doors and experience that cr connection to creation. I encourage you to take some time, maybe in the cool of the evening, to go take a walk or just sit outside and release whatever has been, you have been carrying through the day. The stress of that day, the things left undone, the worries of tomorrow, frustration or anger or anxiety. Because when we put these things down, we can pick up that tune of creation. When we look and listen with gratitude and wonder we will notice the beauty all around us. We will hear creation's praise in the, call, the songs of birds and the calls of cicadas and the caress of the breeze in every breath and in every heartbeat. Friends, in this presence, we are connected with creation and are drawn near to our creator. 
This connection is not only meant to rejuvenate us, but it's meant to nurture our compassion and our empathy. It calls us to be mindful of our consumption and our place, not seeing ourselves above nature, but connected with that chorus singing God's praise. Perhaps this is what drew those first people to that sacred space at Arches National Park. And maybe this is what draws us ever near to our creator when we are connected to that creation. In our gospel accounts, in Jesus' life, when things are hectic, when he's tired, when he's frustrated, when he just needs a break, Jesus so often leaves his friends and goes off to spend time alone in creation. Perhaps this allows him to rejuvenate. Perhaps those vibrations, those unheard songs fill his soul and his spirit. Perhaps this is what allows him to resist those temptations in the wilderness. Perhaps this is why in his most dire hour he came to a garden to be connected with that creation and his creator. So this week, I hope that you will spend some time with creation, connecting with God through that connection, through that creation. I hope that you will listen with gratitude and wonder to creation's song all around you, and that you will join in that praise with your care and compassion for all of God's creatures, for all of those people, and for yourself. Will you pray with me? Glorious God, all of creation sings your praises. May we attune ourselves to that song of creation, joining in that chorus through our compassion and our stewardship and our caring for one another and ourselves, so that we may glorify and enjoy you forever and ever. Amen. And before you start, before you start, the song uh, is one of my favorite songs. It's an old-timey song. I hope you all know it. I hope you uh, will all join in. I'm so tempted just to come over there and put my arm around you and and sing with you. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. (laughs) But I think this song perfectly summarizes this idea that you don't have to go to a national park. All you need to do is to go outside in that garden and experience that love and presence of our divine Savior. So if you know the words, sing along. And even if you don't, they'll be up there. So. I come to the garden alone. Do
Thank you. <laughs> Folks, we come to this time in our worship of tithes and offerings. Your generosity is what makes Vacation Bible School possible. It's what makes all of these ministries in the church possible. We could not do this without you. So let us continue our worship as we joyfully bring God's tithes and our offerings.
friends, if you are in need of private prayer this morning, I want to remind you that every Sunday after the services, there is someone here at the window to your left ready to pray with you. And now let us join our hearts together as we pray for all of God's people. Loving God, composer and conductor of all our songs of praise, we thank you for inviting us into the heavenly chorus in which all the earth joins in making music to proclaim your majesty. We thank you for the beauty of your creation, seen so magnificently in our national parks and every place where we experience you in nature. We pray, O oh God, for our natural world, for our soil and plant life that still, still thirsts from drought. And we pray for lands destroyed by fire or tornadoes, especially the families of those who have lost loved ones in these natural disasters. We pray, O oh God, for our oceans, streams, rivers, and lakes, which we turn to in the heat of summer for refreshment, and which we depend upon for our own bodily needs, for water to drink and cook and clean. Help us to do what we can to safeguard these precious resources, not only for ourselves, but for the rest of the world and for future generations to come. We pray, O oh God, for all those who lack shelter, who see the natural world not as something to enjoy from a window with an air-conditioned walls, but who live day to day in the elements, vulnerable to excessive heat. We pray for them as we enter triple-digit weather this week, that they might find respite and safety from heat-related illness. We thank you, O oh God, for the good work being done by mobile loaves and fishes and Community First to serve those experiencing homelessness. And we pray that you would continue to bless their efforts and all those who serve and volunteer. We pray a special blessing on our 27 middle school students and their 12 adult leaders who leave today for their mission trip to San Antonio to serve with Blueprint Ministries to restore homes and restore hope. We pray, O oh God, for our pastoral staff who are away this week, that you would bless them and renew them. We thank you for all those who serve this church on staff and as volunteers, who bring this community so many opportunities to know you and love you more and to serve using the gifts you have given us. We pray for all those in our community who are in need this day, for all who suffer. We pray for those who are in pain, either physically or mentally, and we lift up those who are awaiting much-needed treatment for illness or disease. We pray for those who are alone or unloved and ask that your presence and love be made manifest to them. We ask you to watch over our young people, especially those feeling anxious or overly stressed by the demands and pressures they face this day. Give them wisdom and comfort. Dear God, you whom Jesus called Abba, Father, we thank you for the blessings that you have given to us in our earthly fathers. We pray for those who are in the midst of fathering young children or continuing to parent adult children with special needs. May they know this Father's Day how much their care is valued and cherished. We pray for those who have lost their fathers too soon, and we pray for those fathers who have lost a child. May you remind each of us this day of your constant love and provision for us, and empower us to live out the best of our ideals for what good parents should be, with your peace-loving Holy Spirit to guide us. We ask all of these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, your Son, who taught us to pray, saying, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Would you please stand as you are able, and let's sing together. Friends, I want to leave you with a blessing and a benediction. The blessing is this, that as you go out into the world today, that you hear creation's song and that you join in that song with your compassion to others, to those that you love, and to those that nobody loves. Now may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and in all of your days. And let all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. What? Oh, yeah, where are they in the, the parlor? Okay.